Welcome back to Relatively Speaking 2020. My name is Rosemary and today I'm going to talk to you about vortex math um, or secret geometry, they're all related, and energy as well as the relationship between a silicone, a celestial, and or organic computer and how that affects into the quantum space, which is time, which time is an illusion. Um, also how that affects with energy itself, energy motions, emotions, your emotions that are in your body and how it relates to a universal point of view, but also a multiversal point of view, and as above, so below, how they're all related. Um, so one of the things that we'd like to talk about is actually um, electrons in themselves. Uh, electrons themselves are actually quantum. They're quantum objects. So you would think of an atom having protons and neutrons and having clouds of electrons, clouds of electrons. Um, so along with all the quantum energy or quantum objects, an electron is partly a wave and partly a particle. Uh, to be more accurate, an electron is neither literally a traditional wave nor a traditional particle, but it is instead a quantized fluctuating probability wave function. So it's, um, and it is both there and not there. So it is a cloud and being both there and not there would therefore have it be quantum superposition and entangled in itself. So again, this is on the outside of an atom. And I'm saying atom because there's also Adam as where we have the Adam and Eve story, if anybody is following any kind of religious text out there. And Adam and Eve story or the first origin stories are in every religious um, religious text. Um, and each text, and I, I believe it's called Omniism, um, or Omniist if you are, uh, you believe that all religions have an ounce of truth to them. They are all both right, and they are all, I say both, but all right, all correct in their sense, but they're also all wrong um, when people play the telephone game. This is part of the common thread story that I have, um, and you see I've recently done as Revelation and such, um, connecting those dots together. I do have the creation side of this as well, Christian stories and their similarities as well. Um, but today I want to talk about the vortex math and briefly to kind of to show what we have. Um, I'm going to show you a picture to kind of describe, if you can see here, uh, the mathematics. We have the first iteration, consciousness or zero point, and then you have the duality split. And this is actually the beginning of the flower of life pattern, which is actually Metatron's cube. And I will also get to that later within this discussion. And this also may be a part two video. There's a lot of information that I'm going to cover in this. Um, so I have the astronomy here. You can see first big bang point. Um, you have dual parts. You have the splitting. You also have biology when we look at cells, when they start to open, especially cells like this that uh, basically, I egg and sperm. So again, mitosis, uh, and they do grow Fibonacci spiral, just as in the mathematics side here. So it's just one of the pictures, many that I have images that I'm going to show. Ta-da. And I want to do it in a way to show you the number side of this. Now, back in 2020, and it was either in 2020 or 2021, um, early 2021, um, in our discord, we had gone through a lot of, uh, hardships with our 3D spaces. Um, and Scott, being a teacher within the school, uh, um, is the information that's been going out. And, and in his 46 years of life, he had information as well, putting keys out, basically. Uh, and the Discord for 2020 that uh, I was a part of, as well as Kira, um, or Energies 1111, and we also had a few other people come in. Um, one of the things that he would talk about is the numbers for 8, 12, 16, and those iterations, the four times table, um, and would be obsessed with that number sequence. Uh, also, his name, um, he's, Scott's name is, doesn't know his origin name, um, and it would always put four question, four question marks as an origin name, just four, again, number four. Uh, so during a particular night, and, um, the ability I have is, uh, and I was, and I have said this before, uh, is a gift that was given to me at my birth. I remember being held by God's source at my birth. I have memories before the birth. Uh, I have memories in the womb. I have memories breaking from source. I have that memory. Um, 
like people like to say an Akashic library, that is a universal library. I'm bringing in it into a multiversal sense, which is now where the electrons come in or emotional layers come in and where a person's perception come in. It's also touching a little bit on the Mandela effect that we have going on that some people have known about. Um, Mandela effect meaning that we all don't come from the same origin point. And that I will get to as well because that is represented by an RGB or a CKMY scale. Again, simulation. And one of Hawkins' last words were, we are living in a simulation. A highly advanced simula uh, simulation, but a simulation in a sense. And if you think of your soul, your essence inside of you is the what is controlling your organic body and your mind as a computer. Again, as above, so below. So we have a network of star systems from the first Big Bang. Big Bang being heart, Big Bang being the first conception. Uh, the moment your soul is born into this existence, the mitosis of cells. Again, back to that picture I showed earlier, the Big Bang. Um, so first thing that I had was taking these um, numbers on a particular night, and a lot of times I will channel information will come into me. Um, and we were going over at the particular time that I was channeling the information for these numbers. And I'm typically not good with numbers. Uh, growing up, it was barely passing math for all the way until college. Um, but to break things down in numerology actually made sense for this. Um, particular night, we were going through in um, the eviction which is also within our um, Discord. Um, Scott and Vicky were getting evicted, and I went through the RTA in Canada and actually pulled out all the information from that, and we were up till 3 a.m., all the lawyer information, everything out to see that what the company, that mine properties company, and yes, that building is still there, was actually doing illegal stuff there. So um, anyway, we were up at 3 a.m., and stream of information comes in, and, and I'm sitting there, and my hands are going, and I'm going to say speaking in tongues, and I am wearing that shirt. Speaking in tongues, I did make this, the painting, which you actually see here on my wall. Uh, it's music, and it goes with Scott. If you see any of his music videos, he's actually taking frequencies and pushing energy out and actually manipulating the energy within his space, but not just his space, in a different scope. And that scope is, like I said, as above, so below. And I will explain when I go through the string of information. So as I'm doing this and I'm, the energy's coming in, I start writing the numbers down for 8, 12, 16, and then the multiplication table. So, you know, if you keep going down the multiplication table and getting your answers for each one, the four, four multiplication tables, four times, um, and breaking down those answers. So, so for... 4, 8, 12, excuse me, 12 would break down 3 in numerology because you would add those numbers together and you would get 3. And then 16 would be 7. So it would be a sequence. And there is an actual sequence that repeats itself over and over again. And when you put the 4 multiplication table for, 4D being time, which is the quantum, it's an illusionary place, 3D being 369, vibration, material, your, your body, um, all of that what is vibrating that you see, again, that uh, breaks down. And when you put it in a specific order, you actually have a way to explain what the simulation is, a framework. So I do have, and I have a first layer to this. Um, I did show this box before and it didn't have as much context. So I'm going to give you this one. This box, if you can see here, um, I did color code it. So nines are on the edges. This is also something the nines on the edges, um, if we look at, even mentioned in the Emerald Tablets, um, the nine lords being the one through nine. Uh, ten is not typically here, but I want to bring out that a one, a zero can be a one. If you take classic example, the Oreo commercial, you take the Oreo and you flip it on its side, it is a one, it is a straight line. So uh, it could be a one or a zero, which now brings you back into this matrix system, one or zero, one or zero, that we see that stream when we watch the movie. Um, an eight is actually an infinite sign. It's an infinity. I mean, it's an infinite sign. So now if you think of these one, this one, which could be a zero, it is an input or an output. Um, zero being representative of, uh, like, gravity, a black hole in a sense. Um, you can take, suck things in, and one being an output, meaning information going out. And one... So a zero could be a black hole, a one could be a white hole. Um, 
in which case a one, nothing can get in a one. It is a closed gate. It is information out only. Um, input, um, input information into the matrix. And I have these color coded so you can see that there's an actual pattern here. You can actually see this pattern going on with the colors. Um, and this is just the first layer. Uh, I did color code again because you will see that the sequence in here, but um, before I bring that up, you can see four, four, eight, three, seven, two, six, one, five. And the numbers repeat themselves over and over. So they're fractals um, and they expand out just like your emotions expand out of your body. Like I said, if you're angry, um, what happens to your blood and your heart starts beating faster. It creates friction. That energy goes out. You get agitated. Um, it affects people around you when you're angry. Uh, even if you're not able to speak, people are able to feel it around you. Energy, emotions, emotions, electrons, clouds. They are both there, but you're not able to perceive them or see them, but or I say perceive them, but see them, but you're able to feel them. So are they both, it is both there, but is yet not there. Um, as within, so without. So uh, I will add the next layer. And I see if you go vertical, you can go across and go horizontal. And if you put it in this particular sequence, you actually get this number sequence. And I'm bringing that up because vortex math itself, vortex math numbers illustrate the contracting and the expanding elements of the external physical plane. And they also illustrate the internal and subtle aspect of the consciousness. See, the universe itself is conscious as above, so below. So, and I'm going to bring that out because I want to talk about how these numbers fit with the energy system or the Merkabas because this is also represented in that. Um, let me move this down. So I'm going to bring up the next layer of the quantum quantum codex box is what I've called, what we've called it within our Discord. And again, these numbers were stream of numbers, information, a key given to me by by Scott, and it was able to unlock. Um, and he does that quite frequently with people, and he's talking to them. He unlocks information that they're holding them, things that they just in their core they you know in your DNA. It is in your DNA as an origin point because each of us came from one big bang. Some of us came from subsequential big bangs, as I said, as a heartbeat. And I will bring that up when I start talking about the Merkabas. Okay, so now you can see here, I went and highlighted the 369 pattern, which happens over and over again, 369, 369. It is the 3D framework that we are kind of stuck in. If you can see, it's like a bar thing. I would say stuck, but some are, some aren't. Some of us can now take our consciousness and go outside of that 3D existence, our physical body, our material. We are illuminated beings because we are within consciousness, or it's actually zero, zero point. We're actually point out, um, which is still one. It's an input. Um, it could be either one, and as it goes on and off. And that is actually how the Merkaba system works, which is um, the energy field around a person. It's a tyroidal field or torus type fashion, and it come, it goes out. One will, um, depending on the feminine or masculine, and yes, people have, are full spectrum can do both. They can be harness both feminine and masculine and spin their chakras certain ways. Um, the body itself, though, isn't in tune with that particular energy signature in which way it spins. Uh, when it's out of tune, it's called disease, dis-ease. We are imbalanced. So this describes the 3D world, and it does also describe the 3D aspect, the vibrational aspect of things that you see in this world, as well as your 3D material self. Um, and this is just one of the layers. So I did continue and layered it one more time. So we're going to put the button to the bottom. And I will show you the rest of this and how it pertains to the information that I'm going to portray. So again, so I also pointed out these numbers, 5, 2, and the 4, 7. And if you look, if you look at the corners of it, we have 4, 7. And if you look at the mirror of it, we have the 1 in those positions. So 1, 4, 7. And if you look at the mirror of the... Um, five, two, we have the eight in that position. So eight, five, two. And there is a relationship between that as well. And I'm going to bring it down to the bottom again, and I will explain that and um, how these numbers are related to each other. Um, now, in a relation between the energy, so we have energy movements. Um, we also have the Fibonacci, which is five. 
it's representing by Greek number five, which is looks kind of look like a zero with a line through it. Um, and that is a golden ratio. You see that um, it's sacred geometry. That aspect, that itself, the, um, the golden ratio, is what causes the mitosis of cells to uh, to grow. And actually, if you could look down at a plant as it's growing, you can actually see where genetically it is written in, so a mathematical code, and what changes it. So people wonder, well, how come I look at a plant and it's not all the same um, environment? Again, what's on the outside, the external of it, that affects that growth pattern, that number pattern, to fractal it out. Um, so what happens would be to mess with it so it fractals a different way now. And that calculation, that's the telephone game, you can actually go back and look. So if you were looking at a plant as it grew, um, it has a specific way that it grows, uh, a seed that comes up with one leaf. And as the second branch comes off of it, it will be a turn, which is, an, again, with the goes with the golden ratio. It's an actual turn until that next leaf comes. And it'll be higher up on that branch if you're looking at it from the side instead of from the top down. But if you're looking at it from the top down, it, it goes with the Fibonacci spiral. And then you will see the next pattern if it was growing another leaf or twig onto that other branch would also apply as the same as the beginning one. The only thing that affects that would be any external forces, wind, uh, a bug coming by and eating it, any of those external forces. So that actually explains like a story, story of life. Um, and that is the beginning of just one aspect of plant. But we look at the golden ratio, which is at its smallest form, it's 1.618. Their number does continue on. It is golden ratio. It is a long number. Um, but if we're looking at a 3-6 point of view, so we have energy is 3-6-9. We have our body, but we also have zero, so that energy goes out. You have the vibration because everything is vibrating. All your molecules are vibrating. Everything in the air is vibrating. It's all vibrations. Um, blowing air. It will vibrate molecules in the that is sitting in our environment to affect what is close to you. Um, we have vibrations, which are represented, again, vibration is represented by the numbers 174. Okay, we go back to the quantum codex box and how those numbers were mirrored. We also have frequency, which is 825. Now, energy, vibration, frequency, golden ratio. So we have Tesla, we have the golden ratio. You're talking about Da Vinci at this point because that was portrayed in art. As, and as you can see, a lot of my art that I have um, is also portrayed in that. So if you take those iterations of and do three times the golden ratio, so three times 1.618 equals 4.854. And numerology, you add those numbers together, you get 21 or three. So if you do six times 1.618, it equals 9.78, or zero, eight, I'm sorry. And if you add those numbers together, you get 24, which is six, breaking down in numerology. Again, so it's Occam's razor. Sometimes the most simplest thing is the way to explain something, um, and it is the answer. Um, again, let me is, is simple. A lot of this is simple, a lot of what you're seeing. And I want to say to be positive radiating, radiating out. Think of it as negativism, okay? So again, this, this number repeats. So even, okay, so 9 times 1 point, again, you'll see that it comes out to 18, and it equals 9. Um, and that is your 369. This is where Nikola Tesla, free energy, energy. Again, 369 is repeating. It is, can be a trap, yes, but it can be harnessed as energy as well. Um, and energy motions, emotions. But I want to bring out the number sequences again. So I'm going to bring this, the quantum codex box up one more time. And I'm going to talk about... I want to talk about a shock, the chakras, and I will get to them in a picture form a little later, and um, talk about how, okay, the third eye is said to be resonating at 852 hertz. Again, an iteration of these numbers that are shown within a quantum box, the way they're reflecting. Solar plexus is 528 hertz. Again, those same numbers, 528, 852, those numbers are resonating. Okay, now the sacral chakra, sacral, is 417 hertz. Again, these numbers are reflecting. You have 47 here in the corner boxes, and you have it on the top where it is the 1, which would be an um, input of information. So inputting is 1. Throat chakra, 741. 
And then we have the crown, the root, and the heart chakra, which actually follow, follows 963, 396, 639. So again, energy and how it is explained as it goes out in the field in your body. And it is in everything, um, exists everywhere. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the number some more. And I'm going to move this down one more time so that you can see my face. <laughs> and uh, talk about, uh, I'm going to bring up another picture. This is vortex math again. This particular picture that you see here. Uh, again, this is vortex math and one of the iterations, one circle of it. Um, and how you can see if you start with the number one on this particular circle, you and if you go around, so one, and go around the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When we get when you get to eight though, and nine, now go to the next one. It's kind of like binary. You fill up the column. So when we go to nine, and when instead of going back to one, let's go up another column to ten, which technically is one. One plus zero is is one. Okay, so then you go 10, and then go to the second count, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and as you see, it spirals out again. Spiral, a golden ratio spiral. Uh, you also have how the nine, I want you to bring up, see the nine is in between the numbers on the side. We have the numbers that are connected together. We have ones and four, seven, you see them on the side. I'm going to bring this up because again, this is important in Merkaba. It's also important in your body. It's important because it's a heart space and an open space and it has its own resonance out. So it goes zero to nine, then one eight, which is your matter. And then it goes again in energy and then again and again, and it expands out. It's an expansion. And each time your heart beats is another expansion. Each time you have an emotion, a thought, because you are consciousness zero, you are spirit, that goes out into the world. And everything you don't think, everything that you didn't do but you thought of and you didn't do. Uh, let's say you decide that you wanted to take out the trash today and you didn't do it. There's a universe out there, parallel universe, multiverse, where you did. And then there's fractals of how that played out. Simulation in itself. Um, because you are, again, consciousness in here controlling your body, your 3D space in one iteration of a universe. So I'm going to bring this one down. And I'm going to talk about a different pattern. Well, a pattern that is similar to that that you've seen. This is the Tree of Life pattern. And I want to bring up that the Tree of Life pattern goes with the Yahweh's Phi pattern as well. So I'm going to bring up the Tree of Life pattern for one particular reason, because as we know, and I'm talking about a simulation at this point, uh, an advanced simulation that we're in, you can see, now you can see Yahweh at the top, and I'm going to say Yahweh because it is a pentagrammal type energy. Makes another circle, it's another cluster. And I'm saying cluster because as you can see behind me, if you can see this painting that's on the wall, that I painted that as well. Uh, this is actually, you can see, there we go. Uh, this is cluster one from Pink Flames of Vision Bell. And if you listen to cluster one, cluster one meaning an iteration, an actual origin point. But I want to bring up the, again, this goes with, uh, you can see the three circles here. Two circles would be Pisces, uh, Pisces, sorry. And then you have three, a third adoration. So even down to a trinity. But if you look at the I-H-A-C-B-F, that is actually the start of the tree of life symbol that actually when you're climbing it as from the origin point, which would be the middle of the circle, you can go down to the bottom, which is a root chakra. Again, this is all within the chakra system. It depends on what side you're balancing on. You have the left side, you have right side, you have DNA side, you have an activation side. You have all of these other things going on. You have a logic side, you have a creative side, you have a feminine side, you have a masculine side. That energy is inside of you. Um, and I'm bringing this up because of a particular picture. And before I get rid of this one, I'm going to bring this up. Let's move this one up. This one behind it. This is your RGB C K M Y. Um, again, look at how they're related. Three circles and where they overlap. A white hole input. 
or a black hole sucking out output. Again, and this goes with color. So I wanted people to think about simulation. RGB scale. Originally, TVs or televisions were an RGB type scale. They had our red, green, blue, like pixels, dots that could portray an image onto a channel through a tube. It would make an actual screen. Later on, as we progressed in our technology, so we're talking about silicon, we are talking about CKMY. All printers use CKMY to actually overlay and get the correct hue so they can print out an image. So an actual two-dimensional image that they can print out. Um, again, this is something that is used to create or recreate an image, a picture. And if you think of the way we see, we see colors. Not everybody sees colors the same way. I can see that this wall behind me is blue, but it's more of a royal blue. I mean, which, which kind? What percentage of blue? And again, those are within, if you look in the computer realm, you can actually see that the computer realm has a specific number for the type of hue. That is how a printer prints. Um, and this is, I want to say, the way you see. So again, what is your origin point? Is it a heartbeat in, heartbeat out? Is it breathing in? Is it breathing out? What are we seeing as energy? Is it going up? Is it rising down? It is both. Is it the Kundalini rising, which is the twin snake? So again, RGB and CKMY, black and white, yin and yang, yang yin, going back and forth. A tree of life, the breath of life. Okay, a tree of life. Now, the reason why I said tree, I want to go back to the Fibonacci. And like I said, with the plant, when you look at a when you look at a plant and the way it grows, and you see that it grows in that Fibonacci sequence, which is called the divine sequence in itself. It's a way of us attaining divinity, light, illumination. We go through a golden ratio, even to a golden thread, which is represented within Hindu and Buddhist religion. A golden thread meaning when you raise your energy up, your consciousness and expand, the golden thread is considered a thread of immortality. Again, light. Light is eternal. Light keeps going. Um, Light is what pushes back the darkness. It is a star, a celestial thing. So again, we are made of starlight. We are made of things of stars. We come from one big bang, one particular big bang, one starting point in this simulation. Um, and think of, as, like I said, a simulation, and I want, because I'm going to bring up the Merkaba and how it is in a body. And so if a body is as above, so below, if we are in a simulation and we are in our body and we're also perceiving something outside of our body, what body are we in? What Merkaba are we in? Whose body? What consciousness? What source energy are you pulling in? So if you're pulling in source energy, whose body is that in consciousness-wise? The first thought of consciousness. When you read um, a religious text, when you and, and it's the first, they always say the God or source is conscious. Ohm. Again, zero. Ohm. It's represented on both paintings that you see here. At the top, I have what's called the Ohm Gate. These are paintings that I did um, channeled, okay, and source in. And if you see on the side here, I turn these paintings sideways. It is on my wall, too, behind me. This is the you choose poorly. So you start off with own gate, a, a great expansion, consciousness coming in. And as you go through life, depending on your choices and your decisions, you, and also duality, because we are here experiencing this. This is an experience. Um, some people may think it's experiment life, but it's an experience. And if you can learn from it, even from your mistakes, imagine how you can grow. Uh, instead of holding on to all the negative things, and it weighs you down as light, it makes your stained glass window of yourself, of a piece, a fractal, a broken reality of source coming off from the ohm gate. If you remain dirty, I mean, you look at this green part and it just gets dirty. You choose poorly, get to a hell point, a destructive point, a potential for destruction. But even in destruction, there is creation. There's life. There's a release. There's a recycling. Um, this is where reincarnation has come in play. At this particular now, and I'm just bringing this up, reincarnation has been turned off because we're in a particular now and we are at a point where source has become conscious. And I want to reiterate, this goes with the common threads, um, the common theme within the end world scenarios that I did paint. Again, it's not such destruction. I want people to actually look at it, that Revelations is multi-perspective of one event. Um, it is portraying destruction. If you are in bad karma, you are going. It, that destruction comes to you. 
or it portrays the beginning of a new world. If you are in positive, to tear down what is old, to tear down what is holding you back, to, to tear down what is causing your soul to stop expanding and becoming light, expanding outwards, um, breathing. And um, it is a creation that is happening within a destruction. The end of the old into a new. Zero to nine. Nine being the end. Ten being a new beginning. Another one. A one zero. Another one. See another spiral just like in that picture I showed you before. So again, another input. <laughs> a new beginning. Uh, something to be excited about if you're able to transcend what you what you what did you learn? Don't hold your mistakes as detriments to yourself and, and keep that in your body as trauma. But open up and let yourself breathe and go. Oh, okay, I get it. I, I you know I experienced this. It was horrible and it happened. But what did I learn? Did I survive? I'm still alive. I'm breathing. I'm able to go. Hey, you know I had this experience and it was wasn't a great experience to somebody. And I see that you've had something similar. I can help you out so it's not so bad for you. You know, I can help you see that inside of you because we're reflecting each other. We're broken pieces from the original source, broken reality. Um, yeah, and so just something to think about. And I want to bring up, so the tree of life. So I'm going to get rid of the RGB for a moment. I want to bring up, this is the symbol for the um, tetragrammaton which some call Yahweh. Again, the, the four letters, Y-H-W-H. And the reason why I'm describing four letters is if you can take a Y and now put it in a three-dimensional, not just a flat, just a Y that you draw the, the letters on, but a three-dimensional model and have it almost look like a cup, a funnel. And now take the, take the Y and flip it upside down and connect them together. So now it's a funnel that comes down like an hourglass, okay? A circle. And if you were looking down at a circle, you would see this particular circle that I have, this tetra, tetragrammaton, which is considered the Yahweh. Um, and now if you take the H's and you do the same, so you make a three-dimensional, so it would something just be a line like a circle and a cylinder. And if you flip it upside down, so H can go up and down. Think of that as, and put that in vibration now, through the two, through the body that you have. Again, in a Tyrolo field or a uh, Taurus, when it comes out of energy out of your body, it looks kind of like a donut, but the way the energy flows, and if it's blocked in an area, it flows off, it doesn't flow right. Um, but if you put that in a three-dimensional model and think of it as your body is an hourglass and think of the way that your the energy moves through, H being a pitch even. And then a W, you could do the same thing. We turn it three-dimensional, but turn it more, the W, into something that is more like an electron. I'm sorry, my camera's a little moving around a bit. So think of it more as um, amplitude, waves, sine waves, cosine. Uh, when we um, talk, our resonance, our, what we're pitched, what we're using to talk with, our tones. That is why Yahweh itself, the, the, and it is considered the name of God, the word of God doesn't have any phonetic value at all. Um, it was assigned by Hebrews uh, to have phonetic value, Yahweh. I mean, again, when I mentioned uh, telephone game, we have Yahweh, we have Sinawe, you have Yeshua. These names, they're similar and they offshoot. Again, perception. Perception is a multiversal thing. It is how many people are perceiving this one particular moment and what do they hear? What are they feeling? How are they perceiving? What is their avatar feeling? What? How does how does your your organic computer work? And I want to bring out that Yahweh himself, even the letters for that, those letters, they actually represent um, in Hebrew the actual molecules that make up the DNA strands in your body. Uh, so the name of God, what Hebrew say is God again, the name is actually in your body. It is in your DNA. And um, this is an experience I've had with energy, with healing, especially I've learned from Scott. The Scott has an ability to rewrite that, to control that, to, to help your brain actually create new pathways, to erase stuff that is old in your body, to take those blockages out. And it just depends on how your perspective is, is your, how much of your, you're looking at as negative, as a detriment, or how much of you're looking at as, okay, this is an experience to learn something special. 
Um, this is the way he heals, and it's awesome. <laughs> I had experienced it quite often. And I want to bring now your attention to the symbols within the Tetragrammaton. Okay, so we have the sword that's here. You have a spade, you have a cup, and you have a coin, which is also Star of David, a cup. Now, a cup is sometimes often represents uh, Christianity as being the holy grail. Think of a cup as being the that which holds uh, unconditional love, immortal life, and also I want to think of the cup as being feminine as being a womb, uh, something that holds, it's a vessel that holds a womb, that holds life. Um, and it's given to, okay, sword, masculine thing. Masculine thing is a sword because it is pervasive. It represents the masculine, even um, reproductive system. And how when you bring those two together, you create an actual energy field in the middle that creates new life. Um, and also that these, the spade, the cup, the coins are representative uh, in, in the swords within tarot. Um, and we do often use tarot within our school as well, that we're building our community. Um, Mystic Vicky does it. So does uh, Energies 1111 or Kira 1111. Um, I myself have done tarot, and we uh, use it as a tool because, again, tarot actually describes life. And I get, like I said, here's the pentagram that you can see here. Well, it's a pentagram on the bottom, I should say, which you have the actual five-pointed star, which is considered Yahweh, which is the top of the tree of life. Um, crown, which is representative of which side are we going up on? What path? And a tarot itself is representation of a life. It's a life path. When you look at the major arcana, which are our external worldly views, big major arcana stuff, and then you have the original deck, which is where your playing cards come from. Uh, you have diamonds, hearts, and spades, and um, all of those where, are with inside the playing cards, regular playing 52 deck. Um, but it represents aspects of life. It represents money. It represents domestic affairs. It represents coins or cups being in motion. Um, energy movements, again, what you hold inside you, what you bring out. Uh, swords are sometimes, obviously, things that are combatant within us. Um, so the opposite of good emotions of those happy emotions. Uh, and then even in this symbol, we have the Alpha and Omega. So you see the A at the top and the star, and the Omega symbol at the bottom. And what is in between? Again, nine. If we look at between in the, in the earlier image, we had that particular picture where we had eight on the outside and it made nine was the barrier in between. So again, what is in between? Um, being zero all the way through nine. What is, which, which branch are you going up? One through nine, um, or one through eight, I should say nine, being the absolute totalitarianism to the ending and the beginning of another cycle. So another one, zero, Pfft, zero, one. Okay. And also in this symbol, you see, um, some of the classic, you see a male and a female symbol on the left and right. Uh, what looks like um, eyes at the top. Again, you have the symbol for male, female. You have them inverted, and you have sort of a devil symbol there. Uh, these are religious symbols themselves. Um, it just pertains to the way you think. Your manifestation abilities. Satan itself is the manifestation of how man has done manifestation into the world that does harm to people. Uh, a breaking of that fractal, of hurting of other people. So it's karma that will come back, again, to balance. It does balance itself. This is why oftentimes we see, and especially in the recent readings, a lot of what is called karmics or karmic cycles going on in this particular now. We are actually at a particular now where karma, reincarnation is turned off, we are healing that karma um, to go on to the next book of his story, history. His story being the to total of, of everything that we're in. So uh, I want to bring those back down. I'm going to bring up this one. This would be the Yahweh's phi. So again, this is the Yahweh number, um, and it is also within the Tree of Life symbol. But this is representative with the golden ratio added onto it again. So this is actually this one right here. This is broken down and actually put in a circle around it. And if you can see the numbers on it, I will blow it up so you can look at the numbers here. The ratio on here. Again, zero, circle, O. But if you see the numbers, 360, 72, actually, sorry, I get 72, 144. That's a significant number. 
216. Now, if we add those numbers up, numerology wise, 360, 3 plus 6 is 9. 7 plus 2 is 9. 1 plus 4 plus 4 is 9. 216 is 9. Again, you see this is a barrier. This is the ending of one particular consciousness thought into another. And if you can even see in the inside of this inner circle here, we have another inverted pentagram, inverted five star, another Yahweh, and inverted what you would call, you know, some people say what negative energy, positive energy, negative energy, positive. It just keeps going and building out negative, positive, negative, positive. It is an actual sequence that takes place. And I wanted to bring that up. So I want to go into how that tree of life, how the Fibonacci um, and the Fibonacci flower uh, pertains to something in what's called a Metatron cube. Um, let's bring it all the way up. And we have shapes for those. So this is a, a Metatron cube. And if you could see a cube, you would start from, not from the top, but from the left on the top. And if you draw it down to a corner in the middle, it's a cube. At the same time, you can see the geometric shapes in there. You can see the triangles in there. You see the squares, you see pentagrams. All of these shapes derive from a particular shape. So again, the Yahweh, the first voice that has come into existence, made these particular shapes were also representative of atoms and of how science is and how the atomic structure and making actual 3D elements. So again, it is breathing. The We are in the consciousness of God, the brain of God. Um, uh, the earth being the earth heart. And I want to say earth heart because that number is represented by the numbers 432 hertz, which is the heart frequency, which is the love frequency, uh, and also 528. So again, we have 528. Um, but these numbers are representative. They are also represented in within the religious text as well. Um, and I'm going to bring out the meta shape. Here you go. Here's how all the shapes, if you can see, we have the triangles, squares. You have them all represented in here. And even right down to if you study early languages, when you study that these particular shapes, you can actually see where the letters would come in. And those cause, letters would have been phonetics. We would attribute them to phonetics, to sound. Again, when you're doing Yahweh and you put it down and you have talking, sound go through that. And where it hits on each side of that circle each vortices, each area is what produces a certain sound, a pitch, an emotion when we talk, because there's difference between words. Um, when we say words, I can say a word like, oh, that sucks, or that sucks, or you can say those words, like you could say fuck, and you could say, oh, fuck, this is fuck, yes, yes, or fuck. I know I'm smart, again, but you could say those words and how they have different meaning, depending on where they hit within that frame the voice of God, the voice of Yahweh, the voice that resonates. Um, we have a heartbeat. We have a voice. Um, women in particular have, um, we have a, an actual field of void that actually brings spirits into this world between our legs, okay? Um, even that, that orgasmic state is loud. We use our voice. So again, this is a creation place. We create our voices from our heart, using our brain, our intent to logically look at what we're seeing in here and say, okay, should we be afraid of that? If we're afraid of that, we lower our vibrations. We become static. We become anxious and that energy goes out. Or we can be happy and you can be excited about something and you go, okay, this is getting destroyed, but what is it creating? You know, if, if everything, what are you going to do when the grid goes down, public enemy? The grid went down. Think about, yes, it would cause chaos among people and fear among people who do not know how to live in that particular type of world without electricity. But we did come from that world. And imagine what we can create with going back to being symbiotic with Earth, with Gaia herself, uh, feeling that energy, going out and listening to nature, putting your feet in the dirt and the grass, looking up at that tree, that Fibonacci spiral, that energy that comes out and feeling that and source energy. Again, starlight. The sun is source. It's a source energy for, for life here on Earth. And again, as I said before, within our Discord, it's been noted that a lot of times when somebody's emotions, emotions, energy, emotions, somebody's control, again, outside, I'm talking about macro, micro now. Somebody's emotions, and I say Scott's emotions, we've noticed that uh, if he's gotten angry, we have seen sun flares pop off. 
Um, he's even had experiences, which again, if you come to Discord, you can talk to Vicky. She has uh, experience of when he would talk about spiking the shaman resins, and it would happen. But again, this goes with emotions. These these emotions go together, and as above, so below. So as we are inside the consciousness, the conscious source, the the living force. We are also a force within a living force. <laughs> um, and like I said before, at the end of Revelations, at the end of any of them, the Hindu religion, which was in my last video, uh, God's source is supposed to come back to help to live this people. Again, create a new earth. We're here to create a new place. We're an energy place. We are no longer just trapped inside the 3D existence, the go to work, come home, and, and, and it's just all about money. It's all about material. It's not. We're more than that. We are more. We are outside of that. We exist. A lot of us do. Some of us are still trapped in that. Some of us will, some of us will never break out of that. Uh, they will be trapped in that because they're not able to perceive something more of themselves. I'm not going to bash people, but certain people are atheists. They don't perceive anything divine. It's outside of them. Even though the math shows it, the science shows it, the art shows it, a person does it, a soul within a person, being alive, looking at animals. Um, all of that is within, and it's also without. So again, uh, I'm bringing that up, and I want to bring up one more picture of shapes. So I'm going to bring this up to the top. Again, so here's your numbers. Okay, 369, 369. And then look at your 8, 5, 2, 1, 4, 7, 1, 4, 7. Do you see how they make the shapes? They make the actual shapes that make up your reality as a computer and you're programming it, sometimes they have number values when you're using shapes. They have vertices, they have axis, they have them where you place them so you can make an actual shape, a creation. If anybody's played any of the sculpting games, or I should say sculpting software, if anybody has played any video games that make anything, even Minecraft where you're destroying something to rebuild something, how many blocks do you use? Where do you place them? What pos what shape are you intending to use? And those are just pixelated. So you're using squares to make something. And you can make a triangle out of using squares or blocks. So again, these are all representative. We have the numbers and you can see here, we have singularities point, we have origin, and the chakras are actually within them if a person was to sit down in between this. Um, the way it's growing now, it represents the, again, heaven, growth, evolution. We have this Yahweh symbol, okay? Again, which tree? Tree of life, okay? This is all representative inside of here. I'm going to drop these down to the bottom. And I'm going to talk about more of the numbers in a second. Um, I'll leave these ones up for now. Uh, because I'm going to go into how the body numbers are. But I also want to bring up the Merkaba. Okay, so I'm going to show you real quick the Quantum Codex box again. there and there's the quantum codex box and I'm going to show you a Merkaba and with the numbers and what we've been saying here here's a Merkaba which is now the energy source that is around our body that the triangles the ones below the the actual energy the way it flows through the body and I do have a diagram for it and I will actually put it in the next video because this video has gone on long enough so this is part one it'll be part two and I will bring up how the numbers again two eight five two five eight one four seven we have nine or zero one zero okay I will bring these up in the next video on how it relates to an organic body and not just the 3D life that we're seeing, the existence that we're in. So I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to bring the one down to its face and I'm going to come back in the next video. Um, and I'm going to uh, bring up how it relates to organic. So again, this is Rosemary. I'm going to sign off for now. And I will see you in the next video, which will be the next one about how the Merkaba, how the shapes, how the quantum codex box, how frequency and emotion, 369, all explains the existence that we're living in and how to break out of our own exteriors and go further, keep going, be a light being. Uh, and emotions, how those anchors hold us down. So again, until the next video.